And what happens in these moments, whether it's in our X Factor Accelerator or in the boot camp, is there's laughter, there's energy added to these moments that allows them to self reflect and go, but that was so much more fun than feeling awkward or stuck or frozen or not participating. So that reaction from the rest of the group reinforces, hey, this other way of thinking can help me in this area. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Well, a big part for us in the group training aspect is the reflection back from other members of the program. And that's so important because oftentimes the self-criticism if it's running nonstop and it's never countered with any real evidence, it can overrun the way you view things. And then it takes other members in the program sharing, no, you were funny in that moment, or that was an awesome conversation that we had. And I really enjoyed that. And wow, you're so charismatic to break through that self-criticism that is overriding their ability to just have a bit more fun in an interaction, let loose, be more open, as we said. It also gives them an opportunity to see the way that they think in the context of the, the games that are being played. Now, the way that they, for a lot of our clients, they're, you could say that they're very analytical. They work in problem solving fields. They're engineers, they're programmers. And so that mindset of getting things perfect works really well when you're engineering, when you're building a bridge, when you're putting something together or you're looking for flaws in things. It's amazing. It's kind of essential. <laughs> Thankfully. Of course. <laughs> but that, that same mindset doesn't work so well in a creative realm where you have to be able to let things go and develop. And I always get excited when we're about to do the improv sessions because I know it is going to frustrate a lot of the folks that come in because they're going to try to use the mindset that they've been so successful in life with. But it's also the mindset that has had them lacking in certain areas why they're, they're in our class and what they're looking to approve upon. And what's great about improv, and especially if you have a great improv teacher as we do, where they won't allow the, the thinking to happen. And if they see our clients putting on their analytical hat, they call them out and won't allow the game to progress. The only way to allow the game to progress is to put on their, their creative and be in the moment hat. And that's when they start to, for the first time, see that they can use a, um, a different mindset, a different thinking process that will allow them to to be successful in that context. And as AJ said, once they start getting some laughs or they realize that they were better uh, in that scenario than they thought they were going to be, that gives them an opportunity then to dive into it more. And we've brought improv into our classes because we know the benefits of it. And we thought if they had a taste of it here and, and saw its benefits, that then they would go out into the real world and pursue that more so that they can be in an environment that forces them to switch that hat. Because they'll just go home and go back into their analytical problem solving mindsets that again, allow them to be successful at work, but not so much in the, in the connection realm. That analytical skill is, 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 as you say, essential in building a bridge or doing a financial report. And you kind of need to have the numbers right in those kinds of things. But it doesn't work in leading people at all uh, because you can't just solve human problems by trying to work them out in your head, unfortunately. They're not maths equations. As Kelly Wilson likes to say, you know, about his clients, you know, we need to appreciate them like sunsets. You don't sit there with a sunset and go, look at the way the light is refracting off that cloud. You just go, wow, look at that. And uh, we need to be, you know, humans have that element of um, chaos about them. They're unpredictable. So, yeah, we can't solve them like maths problems. 
And when we're criticizing ourselves in that way, we're actually uh, trying to solve ourselves like maths problems too, actually. We're treating ourselves like a problem to be solved. And if I could just critique myself more and control my performance tighter, I can ensure that I feel okay, but it just doesn't work out that way. And I love the way your improv classes, you know, they introduce that an alternative way. I would say though, that it's probably not going to, it doesn't replace the other way. It provides an alternative way of looking, interacting. And so it gives people more greater flexibility and hopefully a greater range of options about how they can re like react to the things that are going on in their lives. That loop, though, of like going back to I need to solve this, I need to crit critique myself, I need to, to nail down and bolt down all aspects of my behavior to make sure it's perfect, to make sure I'm okay, that will stay if they keep reinforcing that. So you give this beautiful opportunity for them to just step outside of that. And then I imagine that you have, you see, you would then want to link that to like a why why would they keep wanting to go down that path because they need to have some ways that that's like reinforced ways that they just like know like are encouraged to keep going down that path we drop great content each and every week and we want to make sure that you guys get notified and in order to do that you're gonna to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and if you've gotten a lot of value out of this make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends absolutely and it's it's a night and day difference it's the difference between an awkward conversation where they feel stuck or trapped not knowing what to say or do because they don't want to fail versus and we're gonna we love act and the first principle is acceptance this idea that underpins all of improv which is yes and whatever happens you have to accept it and then add to it so in a conversation you have to accept the mistakes and add to it and keep trucking and keep moving along and what happens in these moments whether it's in our x factor accelerator or in the boot camp is there's laughter there's energy added to these moments that allows them to self-reflect and go, but that was so much more fun than feeling awkward or stuck or frozen or not participating. So that reaction from the rest of the group reinforces, hey, this other way of thinking can help me in this area. It's not to say, hey, don't go into work and yes and your way through a financial report. <laughs> Probably not gonna be very helpful. But when you start to see people react to you differently, and you start to feel that energy back and all of a sudden you're not internally feeling awkward, you start to accept, hey, this, this way of being in improv and this idea of yes and is a concept that's applicable in relationships. Yeah, absolutely. Then there's a felt, you sort of, you talk about the fun and there's a playfulness in that. There's like a, um, a felt sense of that in your body, isn't there? Like some people would say there's like a lightness to that, so they feel an energy versus when they're really stuck in a loop of self-criticism and trying to avoid failure, there's a real tension and tightness and heaviness. And I imagine the energy in the room is huge when you're doing this stuff, but um, giving people that a felt experience because you can do your work and you can feel that lightness, that passion, that's probably where they started you know your clients were drawn to doing a certain type of work because they found it interesting or maybe not all of them you know but then they they felt curious about it in some way and if, if they don't feel curious and they don't enjoy their work then maybe that's not the right work i would say but um you'd like to think that people can find a career where they're genuinely interested like i'm just fascinated by people i find people endlessly interesting not always interpersonally sometimes the theory of it too you know um but i just never kind of get tired of that doing that work so i i feel like a joy in doing this work and that's what you're capturing so that's that healthy striving that like I love doing this work I feel really excited by it I feel energized towards it yes yeah, sometimes it's hard and I don't love admin but you know so there's elements of that that I don't enjoy but overall I can keep tapping into this sense of like joy and that's that that's a flexible 
way of, you know, living your life really, isn't it? I yeah. mean, I, I appreciate that's a very privileged position too, yeah? Like a lot of people just have to work because they have to work. Like I appreciate that. I'm very privileged. And I was going to say, I think in a lot of ways, we introduce this concept of psychological flexibility in our programs to a lot of our students. Unfortunately, many of them are in career tracks that, yes, they have immense aptitude for, but a lot of times they were pushed by their parents or by school or they rushed into it because they didn't really get to experience much else of life. And for a lot of our clients, you know, you you start out in school, you start doing well in math or science, you get placed into advanced classes, all of a sudden you're getting recognized for the perfection in that area. It feels good. Then your family's reinforcing, okay, you got to be a doctor, you got to be a lawyer, you got to be an engineer to be successful. And then they get through their 20s and 30s and they they realize, okay, I've sacrificed a lot for this career, but is this where I'm finding meaning? Is this really tapping into my truest potential? And oftentimes they haven't been flexible in their life. They've been inflexible in thinking that this is the path sticking with it. And then they do improv with us, they come through the program, they unlock their own X factor of what really gives them that lightness, that joy, that happiness. And sometimes our clients go and switch careers. They start a side hustle into a business or they go and they wanna go teach and coach and help others because the numbers, the math, the science isn't as interesting anymore. And what you touched on was was something that Johnny and I recognize. And, and one of the things we love the most about the work that we do is we'll often hear from clients in the weeks following their program that people will ask, what what did you do in Las Vegas? What What is this thing that's going on? Because they're carrying themselves lighter, like a weight has been lifted off, physically lifted off their shoulders because they've been so self-critical, so full of doubt, And they're wearing that openly in their body language. Others are picking up on that energy and others are avoiding them because of that energy. And all of a sudden they're standing taller. They're showcasing a bit more of a smile. They're adding a bit more humor instead of their dry analysis to a conversation. And people are like, did you get a new haircut? Are you working with a stylist? Uh, Did you start losing some weight? And it's a change that's happening internally, but it's being expressed outwardly and people pick up on it. 